on people, this is Shy Harris and today is another edition of Interviews with a Rebel and today I'm sitting down with uh, media maven, uh, <laughs> talk show personality, social media influencer. Yes. You, you, you make me sound good. Okay. You want to talk about something? Okay. <laughs> I have Miss Stephanie Walters. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Good, 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 good. So I feel like you really I really hype me up, though. <laughs> I got to. I mean, those are true accolades for you. You're kind of doing things out here right now. I'm doing a little bit. You yeah. actually been doing it for a while. I have. Yeah, it's been a, a while. It's been a minute. I did a little bit of research. I was going down your social media and like, yo, you've been kind of popping for a little minute. Yeah, you know, and I think being at this stage now, it's like you really think back and how long you've been doing something. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, damn, I'm not Oprah yet, right? <laughs> like, I mean, but for real, you think about, like, I, I look back to sometimes yeah. and I, I see memories pop up on Facebook right, from right, like right. 10 years ago. You interviewed Rick Ross, like, what? I really have been doing it. But you think about the resiliency that you've had to have through these moments and mm -hmm. all the times I think about I wanted to give up. So right, right, right. I love the titles that you said and everything, but it's like there's still more work to do. Right, right, right. Like I said, I've actually known you for probably about... It's been like 10 years. About 10 years, yeah, yeah. It's been a little minute. So I've seen you go from... I know you wasn't a teacher, but I remember you was working in a school mm -hmm. to, you know, working, you know, doing the uh, something in the Water Fest to, you know, having your own production company. So I've seen the different levels of your ascension. So it's been quite a joy to see Aww, over the past couple you. of years. And you have some of the best house parties ever. <laughs> Some of the, the greatest times I've ever had. Good times. This is yeah, like yeah. pre kids. Man. Right, right. Pre kids and pre COVID. Yes, that yeah. part. <laughs> All right, so for the people that don't know you, who are you and what do you do? Wow, that's what I feel. Anytime anybody asks me that question, uh, I feel like it's such a loaded question. So um, I, I kind of I have two lives, but they have blended in together very well. Okay. So, I work in television, so I would okay. call myself a TV personality. Okay. Um, I have my own show, Before Brunch TV, mm -hmm. which is dedicated to women just like pouring into each other. And right, then we right. get to celebrate while cheers and get yeah. our glasses um, to women's empowerment. Got the on deck. Mimosas on deck. Like you helped us with the last season. Right. Um, and so I've done that for the three uh, three years, well, three years, three seasons. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, I had on um, a TV show called Montage. It was all lifestyle based. So mm -hmm. it was like fashion, beauty, entertainment, which is something I'm really passionate about. Right. But um, from that, I took a pause because I was like, I want to do something deeper. I want to do something more. Like, I love entertainment. I yeah. love like the gossip. I love fashion and beauty. But I'm like, what do I really connect with and, and what really resonates with women? And so that's when we got to this Before Brunch show about okay. like just really connecting and hearing people's stories. So I work in TV and media. Um, I also do like lifestyle segments on, like the Hampton Road show and Virginia This Morning and mm. another channel, um, another TV show outside of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then I also like co-host on the show sometimes. Okay. So I'm able okay. to do that. On the other side, um, I am the director of engagement for a nonprofit called Yellow. Okay. Um, and so Yellow Wasn't is... Wasn't another name? Yeah. So we used to be called from one hand to another. Okay. Yeah. Totally dissolved that organization. Mm -hmm. Now we're called Yellow. Um, okay. It's Pharrell's nonprofit. And so okay. we're dedicated to evening the odds for education. So we're actually in the process right now of like, you know, building something amazing. Okay. That will be announced soon. I feel like soon. you probably can't speak about that. That will be announced soon. Um, but... It's so awesome because I really get to use my skills like in media and my like love for people mm -hmm. to like just really connect. So I get to lead like local and national partnerships. Um, I handle a lot of our socials. So we have like this Bright Spark series mm -hmm. on IG that we're interviewing amazing people doing really cool things. Right. Um, I got to like host something in the water, all right. the conversations. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's been like that's my nine to five, but I don't even really call it like a job that I would say that's part of my career because yeah, yeah. I absolutely love that job like i love the people i work with if they've created such a space where like you're working for this organization but mm -hmm. you can still do what you love and if you know anything about somebody like a pharrell like he's like yo everybody needs to follow their dreams right, and everybody right, right. needs to have space to be able to create to follow their dreams so i it, everything has blended in so beautifully so how you said i was in education yeah. i still am it's just in a total different capacity now that's dope that's dope yeah. that's dope okay so uh before we kind of get into the conversation at hand um I like to do an icebreaker, right? <laughs> oh, Lord. What's your icebreaker like? <laughs> All right. So if your life was a movie, you know, uh -huh. you had the Stephanie Walters biopic. <laughs> okay. What would be the three songs that were the three to five songs that would be on your soundtrack? So Ooh. what are the songs that kind of mean the most to your life do, during the course of your life? Wow. Okay. So there's this song. Like, wait, like through the course of my life? Yeah, or through like... the course of your life. So like your high school days, maybe college. Okay. Your young adult to, you know, now or okay. whatever. Gosh, this is hard. <laughs> um, I would say 
in high school days, it was all like Rockefeller, which you can relate to. The yeah, Rockefeller, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Rough Riders era, rest in peace mm-hmm. DMX. Mm-hmm. Um, man, high school, I would just say anything that was Rockefeller based. So like anything okay. like Hard Knock Life, Volume 1, Volume 2, okay, like all okay. those. So that whole, like those albums were like my like whole the staples upcoming. of your life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say college. There was this really good song that I love, and I can't remember if this came out while I was in college or after college, but it's by um, Guapale. It's called Closer. So it's like Closer exactly. to My Dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt like that was this really like motivating song for me. So I was like, all right, now I'm out of school or I'm, I'm about to be out of school. I can like really start following my dreams. And I would say now, um, man, I love like a good old school R&B okay. <clears throat> and hip hop song, but... For me right now, it's going to be a gospel song, Order My Steps. Mm, okay. That is like, because I'm really now, and I'm starting to see how stuff that I've done in my past has right. really been starting to line up. Starting for to you. line up. And I'm like, all right, God, like, continue to lead me right. and, like, guide me every day. Like, mm, okay. order my steps in your word and how I'm supposed to be placed. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's what you were looking no, no, for. No, 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 no. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to listen to that song. It's it's it's, it's powerful, and yeah. it's. I mean, it really just says like edify the words that are coming out of my mouth, and I feel like because I am in media, and I have the power to transform people's lives with the words that I say. Mm-hmm. So make sure whatever I'm, whatever is coming out of my mouth, will be powerful to somebody else's life and transformative. Mm, okay. So do you feel like you're at a place in your career now where just all of the things that you've done in the past are just start, starting to line up where you can kind of see, not necessarily like the the, um, the end of the, the path yeah. or the end of the road, but where... You can like, see the light a little bit. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, I think um, when I look at some of the things that I've done in the past, I think I'm seeing the payoff of my persistence. Mm, so okay. for instance, early on, I was doing a lot of like, red carpet stuff and mm-hmm. entertainment and media. Right. And that's, you know, we came up before social media was even a thing. Yeah. So it really meant something to like be on a red carpet right, and get to do right, an interview right. with, you know, artists who were just taking off. And mm-hmm. I remember I, I was able to interview a lot of the artists that like right before they took off, like a J. Cole, a yep. Kendrick Lamar, like all these amazing people. And so seeing like how their careers have transformed and how my career is growing too, I'm not mm-hmm. there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think I'm able to look back now and appreciate those moments and looking back i'm like man i wish i would have like taken in the moment more because you're so focused and you can understand this Mm -hmm. you're so focused on the task at hand Mm -hmm. i gotta be here i gotta get this interview Mm -hmm. um and that's the task that you didn't really get to appreciate the moment like wow didn't really get i really did that like that was dope right so i think now because once you get to one moment it's like all right so what's what's next yeah Yeah. and so you're always kind of chasing especially in the world of media you're always chasing the what's next moment and Mm -hmm. don't get to really like just settle in like Damn, I just did that. I think the the last time I did that was when I was able to host um the, all the more than the music conversations at something right. in the water, and so that was a really like pivotal moment in my career and for yeah. our company because not only did we get to do the production, but uh, we were helping along the way with like putting the festival together right. through the organization that mm-hmm. I work for, and so I had literally just given birth four months beforehand. I'm like in the middle of hosting, going to the bathroom to pump. Somebody's watching the door for me. Like it's <laughs> insane. But that weekend afterwards, like that Monday, I think I cried half the day because I was like, uh, the messages that we were receiving and everybody's posts and how like of a life changing experience yeah, yeah, that yeah. was for Virginia, right. like Virginia Beach and Hampton Roads, like the impact that that had. And I just like was crying just in gratitude at the fact that like we were able to be a part of this moment and I was able to do something I never would have thought I would be able to do. Like I, you think they would bring in like some major celebrity right, to come right, and host, right, right. but I was asked to do that. And I'm like, wow, okay, what I am doing is lining up just exactly for this moment. Because mm. years ago, I would not have been ready for that moment. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, because that weekend was something special. So, and su- surreal, right? Yeah, yeah. So even just to be able to see you and uh, your husband, Joe, just kind of like doing like the production and just kind of like really just running things was like a joy just to see from the outside looking in. It so, was insane. And yeah. we were, the the beauty in that is like, we were able to hire all black creatives. Local. Right, right, right. So you think about a festival. I know sometimes people get, people, especially celebrities, get a lot of flack. Like, oh, y'all bringing in all these outside yeah. companies. And of course, sometimes you do have to bring in a major right, outside right, right, company because right. we don't have the infrastructure for right. that. 
But the fact that they were able to hire a local company to employ local people, yeah. that did happen. So there were so many things that were happening behind the scenes that so many other people didn't know mm -hmm. um, that locals were involved in. Like that was a beautiful moment. And I, like I said, I cried like yeah. the whole day that Monday. Just I can't believe this happened in our city. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Okay, so um, I believe you know pretty much everything starts like everybody can look at you now and kind of see like the finished product or pretty much close to the finished product. But what was the the Stephanie Walters or Sutton origin story like? You know, what was the story that led you to where you are today? So I always knew, and I tell this story often. I always knew I wanted to be in media. Mm -hmm. I grew up as an only child. Um, and I would like line my stuffed animals and my dogs like <laughs> on this like day bed. Right. And I would talk to them. I would like perform and uh -huh. do little shows. And I remember applying to be like an MTV VJ when I was in high school. Like all these things. I knew, always knew what I wanted Ananda? to do. Huh? You wanted to be a basically, you know, Ananda, <laughs> early Lala, one of those. Um, but I always knew what I wanted to do. Okay. And so like I would be you know hosting talent shows mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff within my like career, um, within my like early career. And like every um, like every night we would sit and watch like Entertainment Tonight or like NBC Nightly News, all this stuff. And I was like, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. So fast forward, I went to college, majored in broadcast journalism. Okay. Um, I got to actually intern at Entertainment Tonight, mm, like okay. which was the most amazing experience like of my life. Right, like, it right, was right. so awesome. It was in New York City. I remember I stayed at my dad's um family friends house i okay. commuted an hour and 10 minutes every day because i stayed in connecticut to the city back and forth and this was an unpaid internship but i met like the that craziest like lot, but, yeah. so i got to go to like a clive davis um grammy luncheon i met donald trump um all these like hmm. crazy things that happened i was like wow this is the space i want to be in but i want to make more of an impact on a more connected like story mm, okay um so that's when i started thinking about like having my own show and all these things so that was my senior year in high in college so, all right so not to cut you off so yeah, what yeah. about that experience made you realize that you didn't <laughs> want to kind of do it for somebody else if that makes sense um so it's not that i want didn't want to do it for anybody else like oh i would go to et you yeah, know yeah, yeah. at any point i love those people um I, and i can i love the fact that i built a relationship where i can still contact them right, today. Right, right. but um i didn't want to just go and fit in into a position mm, i wanted okay. to have more creative control and be like Oh, Shad's doing this today. Let's make the direction of this interview like this. I want to get this from him. Like mm, okay. versus when you're put into a position, you're pretty much told what you can ask and what you uh, can do. Okay. So it wasn't that I didn't want to. It's just that I knew there was something more that I wanted to do. Mm, so okay. coming out of college, I did work for a news station. Um, I was a production assistant. Okay. At the same time, I reached out to Cox Communications. I was like, oh, you guys have this teen talk show. I really just want to be a part. I want to come help out. And yeah, so yeah. They, I came in. And they were like, oh, like, do you know how to um, produce and what they say? They, they asked me, do I know how to like produce shows? And I was like, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> like, I didn't learn that in college. I said yes. And then I figured it out. So, all right. So let's, let me <laughs> ask you this. What is the difference in the, the media world between producing and directing? Okay. So directing is more like you're at the very top level. Right. You're calling the shots in terms of like, all right, camera angles. Right, um, right, right. You're looking at. The overall, like the set, the how whatever. everything looks on camera. Yeah. Whereas yeah. a producer, most times executive producer is a person who's like the showrunner and actually like maybe possibly funding it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas an actual producer, um, you you might have a, like you might be a segment producer, so you might be responsible for booking all the guests for a lifestyle segment. You might be responsible for booking all the guests for the food segments and curating like different topics on that. So it's oh, okay. more like segmented it's it's a little bit more um narrow whereas i feel like directors are more broad looking at the yeah, full picture gotcha 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 got okay, okay yeah so they asked me did i know how to produce and i was like yeah like i yeah i said yes and then i figured it out and uh -huh. so they let me start producing a show on there and what i did I would just ask questions of the other people who were already there. So I was like, oh, can I see your rundown? Like, I had never written a rundown before. Yeah. I had never, like, called and booked a guest before. I had right, never right. done any of that stuff. But I said I could, and then I figured it out. So that transformed me into, like, being able to host the show. At this point, I had gotten laid off from my news station job because this is when the market had just crashed uh -huh. in, what, 2008, 2008 2009. Yeah. I had gotten laid off, and I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity. And so I, I, I just kept saying yes and figuring it out along the way. Now, I wasn't gonna say yes to anything that I just knew sure as hell I didn't know how to That's do. What, like, do you know how to 
string wire off a building. Like, <laughs> hell no, I don't know how to do that. But this is something where I feel like I was passionate enough about to learn. So I knew in the process, I could learn and do it at the same time. So you just <laughs> pulled up a point that really kind of resonated with me. When should people, it's not like you're faking it till you make it. A little bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> so sometimes that can go good. Like it's not like it went good for you. Yeah. Sometimes they can go bad. all the way off. Oh. <laughs> so when should you fake it? And when should you just like, you know what? I'm, I'm cool on that. I can't do that. Yeah. Look, I think... So my friend has a book called Faith It Till You Make It. Okay. So we're going to call it Faith It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you really well going off a wing and a prayer, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think it depends on how deep your heart desire is in it. So okay. I knew that this is the field that I want to be in. Right. And I also knew that, yeah, I wanted to be a host. I think being in front of the camera is great. But I also wanted to control the narrative behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So in order to be able to control the narrative behind the scenes and contribute to that, I had to learn how to produce. So... This was just going to make me more marketable. Mm, so it okay. was a skill that I was willing to learn. It wasn't like, let me just try to do this so I can get in just to be on camera. Right. This was a really valuable skill. So to answer your question, I think you have to determine how passionate do you want to be mm. about it? Like, I really wanted to do it. Right. So it wasn't a question for me. But if you're just doing something, faking it just to get in, I think when it comes to dealing with people's money, mm -hmm. dealing with um, the integrity of something, if you really don't know right, how to right, do right. something and it's going to cost people's jobs or lives, yeah. then you need to say, you know what? I cannot contribute to this right now. I'm willing to learn. But if you need to put somebody else in place in me while I learn, I'm fine with that. Mm, so okay. if it's going to cost people's lives or jobs, don't fake it until you make it. Because <laughs> yeah. that, that, I mean, these are real serious things. You know, this is I'm not dealing with power lines and equipment. I'm dealing with production. So that's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you that makes me? sense. Like, that definitely makes sense. You, 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 you ain't going to call Dominion Power. Yeah, yeah, like, nah, nah, yep, nah. I know how to get on the wire and cut down the tree. <laughs> like, you could kill somebody. Yeah, that's true. So I've definitely been there a couple of times, but I feel like every time I did it, it worked out. Yeah. Just because it's something I was interested in. Mm -hmm. I had like, I had enough skills to kind of get you, you get me get, through it, right. get me through it. But there's certain situations where people are like, yo, I need you to do like a whole full on production by yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Do that. But here's the thing being. But I think we can both connect with this. I think now we're of the age and of the experience where we're OK saying, no, we can't. Right, because there right, was a right, period right. of time where like I didn't want to say, no, I couldn't do something. Or mm. I didn't know how to. But I was also still had to remember I was still young. But honestly, in the media world, everybody's faking it at some point. It's like True. acting like you like when I get off camera, like when you turn on camera, you're like, hey, hi, yeah. welcome to the, 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 the show. And I'm, uh, genuinely, I'm like that mm -hmm. as a person, but I'm not like that all the time. Right, so. Right, right. When you talk about like faking it and being able to be comfortable in yourself and saying, no, I can't, mm -hmm. then I think there's power in that because I can say, you know what? I can't do that, but I know somebody who can. True, true, true. But true. that comes with like dying down to your ego yeah. and being like, all right, let me hone in on the skills that I know I'm very good at. Uh -huh. And then let me work on the stuff that maybe could add to my portfolio. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So um, I know during the course of your career, you know, you were doing like, you know, red carpet events and stuff like that. So when did you decide that you needed to kind of have your own production company or kind of, you know, bet on yourself? Yeah. To make that happen? Um, I had applied to like, so I was, at, at the same time I was working at Cox Communications. Then I was working in the school system as well because, mm -hmm. you know, you got to get paid. Right, right. And I was applying for like multiple jobs, like within news. And I wasn't getting anything, but I knew I never wanted to work in news. Uh -huh. So even coming out of college, I worked at a news station, but that's like the the next level of job you go to. You got to be a production assistant in a newsroom. Is like that this, normally like the first job like that most first, people get out of college? Yeah. Like, well, when I graduated, yeah, nowadays, yeah. these kids have so many amazing opportunities right, right, right. Um, where they can create their own even while yeah, in college. Um, but yeah, that's like the, that's literally the next step for mm. being in journalism. So, and I was like, all right, there's something in this. Like, I know maybe this really isn't for me. Yeah. I just was applying because I'm like, well, I got a degree in journalism. I need to be working in a newsroom, but I knew I never wanted to do that. And there's so many stations that don't have lifestyle shows. So mm. I knew I always wanted to do like lifestyle. I loved like the behind the scenes of fashion. Like I do New York fashion week yeah. every year. And that was my thing. I'm like, man, how can I bring this to life? Because I can't take this to a local newsroom and they're going to air it. It just, dis it doesn't go along with the fire, the murder, the burglary, <laughs> it doesn't make sense because yeah. it's out of this market. So 
um, I was dating my now husband at the time. Mm-hmm. And we were like, hey, let's just like create our own thing. He was into media. Yeah. And we just, we literally just came up with the idea to come up with our own media production company and start doing our own thing. So my first show montage uh-huh. was the flagship show out of our company. And then people saw that and they're like, oh, can you do our stuff? Can you do our stuff? We're like, yeah. And so we started producing other people's um, TV shows and then commercials. Yeah. And it just, it really just spawned and grew. And then we all started offering like, workshops on um like empowerment and entrepreneurship because that was really a passion right, of mine right, right. so we kind of were able to bridge, bridge bring it all together bring it all together okay so and i was actually i feel like i was there to kind of see some of that um yeah. that movement that you guys had what do you feel like i'm really big in like momentum mm-hmm. so what do you guys feel or what do you feel like was the biggest moment that causes the most momentum in the company hmm was there like a certain um, production that you guys had or? Yeah, um, I honestly think and people, so we've been doing this for a while. This will be our, what we're in 2021. This will be our seventh or eighth year in business. We started our company in 2014. Okay. So yeah, this will be our seventh year. I think something in the water. Really? That changed, like literally before then, I mean, we had some great projects yeah, and yeah. money was good and everything, but, and you know, shoot, those first couple years in business, you ain't seeing nothing. Like yeah. you really are breaking even, if not, you're, yeah, you're yeah, even yeah. below. Right, right, right. <laughs> so honestly, something in the water changed our whole like outlook and prospect because that was like a national at the national level we're working with like live nation and doing all these things so Mm -hmm. to be compared and in the same rooms and conversations with people like that it kind of be made us be like okay we're really capable yeah we can do this we can do this and so from there like our name just kept getting out so people Mm -hmm. like would refer us and everything that we've done has been on referral so then we end up transitioning um after that we were getting ready for next year last year something in the water and then obviously before the COVID, world shut yeah, down. COVID happened like we had just shot something for promo that was going to come out like in a couple days before it got canceled yeah, yeah. we knew ahead of time it was going to be canceled but you yeah, still want to hold okay. on yeah, hope yeah, yeah. right um and so then last year like we got a call to work on um the biden campaign mm, yeah. and so that was like another pivotal moment we're like okay like and we had two national commercials airing you had one with your mom and your daughter yeah right? me my mom my daughter and then we had another one um with my line sister and her daughter and that was another national okay. campaign so it was crazy like people around the country are seeing our commercials and it's just that was another pivotal moment how for was us. that though how was it yeah what do you mean like working on it or just, or just like how was that experience like i know we, and talking about momentum, like yeah. I know that had to make y'all feel like, yeah, we're really doing it. If we, you know. Yeah, I, but we got caught up in the what's next. Eh. What's next? And it it was by the grace of God, like another black woman, um, Kimberly, who put us on to that commercial. Mm-hmm. She connected us, and so I think it was great. And then we got some more stuff from that work and that work, but it's always a what's next. And you know how it is being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so my husband runs the company full time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm working right, right, and right, right. still doing stuff for the company. So for him, yeah, it's great. Like, ooh, this is cool. Everybody's hitting us up. Um, but then it is a what's next. Cause those bills come every month. Yeah, and I mean, granted, these were great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great yeah, yeah. paychecks. <laughs> like, you know, and that doesn't just discount that. But at the same time, you're like, okay, this is a nice lump sum of money. All right, uh-huh. we got how many months to, uh-huh. you know, but it's not as much pressure because I'm still still right. working. But why do you feel like that is as far as like just us creators and entrepreneurs yeah. have that like what's next mentality? I think because Because I'm definitely media, like that myself. Like, I, honestly, I think right now it's social media. I think yeah. it's social media. There's a lot of pressure to continuously push out content and to uh-huh. stay relevant. And we're like on the a little bit older side than these new yeah, creatives. Yeah, yeah. And so I see some of the stuff they're putting out. I'm like, this is trash. <laughs> Not even to be one of those old judgmental auntie type persons. But right, I'm like, right, right. this is trash. And they've got like 10 million views. And here we are, got the top notch equipment mm-hmm. and doing all this stuff. And we're like, what's next? So yeah. I think the pressure of social media and the pressure just to stay relevant because right now everybody's popping up with a production company, right? You have a, you go get your, your my first camera and you can call yourself a production company and, and their prices are significantly lower than what our prices are, but you also pay for what you get. But initially if somebody budget is only 400 and they want a full production with Johnny who has one camera, that's what they're going to go with. Yeah. I've seen somebody post that they're (laughs) like the, the only black owned production company in the area. I'm like, huh, interesting. 
very much interesting. But I just let it slide, you know, let, let them be great. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was very interesting. You know, pe people are gonna, uh, I'm, look, there's room for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we all do something different. Right. Like our company does something totally different than your company, right, right. than Viz uh -huh. You know what I mean? We all have like our different, different lanes, lanes yeah. but. The key is we all come together though too. Like we yeah, all yeah. highlight each other right, for different right, right, projects right. because while we have our own individual entities, that's what for tax purposes and our own yeah, individual yeah, yeah. money. But collaboration is the real right, key. Right, so right. I feel like sometimes people talk about this here, especially in Virginia, like, oh, people don't work, people don't work. But I'm like, we're in a whole different, like there's so many pockets of mm -hmm. the collaborators here. And so just right. because everybody isn't working together doesn't mean that people aren't collaborating. Because yeah, yeah. there's that's certain groups of people I don't want to collaborate with and it's sure. not because I'm I'm being bougie or stuck up. It's just that what y'all are doing is not moving me towards my mission. Right, 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 right. I I feel that all the time. There's a lot of people who say, "Yo, like Rashad, you should come out and do this." I'm like, eh, mm -hmm. that's not really doing anything for me. I don't mind coming out and helping you, but if it's something long term, it's not going to help me at all. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather stay in my little lane, work with the people that I like working with, like mm -hmm. being around, and yeah. just kind of keeping it moving from there. Yeah, well, because so. I'm and I'm of the of the space now, like. We're doing stuff with purpose and intent. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's even sometimes a couple people have hit us up about doing certain projects and we're just like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. people, I don't know if people do this to you. People hit you up like, hey, I want to run a project by you. I want, this is something, can we collaborate on? To me, that means when you say, hey, let's collaborate on a project. That means you don't have a budget right. for what you're trying to do and right. you want us to do it for, for free, free. So we can say that we were a part of this. Like, yeah, and, yeah. and you have to very... Um, have some discernment and what that works for you. Now, if we were all to do that, that's something yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. But certain people are like, no, you just don't have a budget and right, you're trying to get right, this, right, get right. this trying to find a way of getting around exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think we have, we've turned down a couple projects just off the strength of like, this just doesn't really fit in the scope of what we believe. Now mm -hmm. there's certain things we're not to tell you like what kind of project you're supposed to do yeah, and who yeah. you are. But at the same time, if we want to give you the best product possible, I want to believe in what you're doing. Right, 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 right. All right, guys, we're just taking a break from this video for one quick second just to remind you guys that if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. This channel is all about empowering different creators and entrepreneurs to really live the life that they want to live and make the money that they want to make. So if you like this video, please consider watching maybe the last two or three videos that we put out because I know you'll probably like those as well. So before we get back to the video, go ahead and just take five seconds, hit subscribe, and you're gonna love every minute of this journey that we're on. So once again, I'm Shy Harris, in case you didn't know, of the Rebel Society, and let's get back to this latest episode. All right, so we just talked about social media, right? And like I said, I was doing some research on your you know, social media, and it feels like you're always on social media doing something, you know, like the interviews, <laughs> You got your own content, your photos. Is it a struggle being on at all times? Yes. Really? It is. You feel like you feel like you can't not post. Mm -hmm. Especially being in front of the camera. Right. As a media personality, because yo, media personality is popping up everywhere. And I think right, I use right. that term very lightly. Yeah, yeah. Um it is a struggle because you always feel like you have to be putting content out there. And then I have to use social media for my job too, which it's mm -hmm. a blessing. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it can become come consuming because you are looking like, dang, okay, it's, all right. I would, you know, it, yeah, it, it can yeah. be a little stressful. And yes, feeling that pressure of like being on. But I feel like over the last couple of years, especially since I've had my daughter, uh -huh. to be a little bit more transparent about how I feel and what's going on in my life. I mean, certain things are just reserved for like my personal space, but talking about- Do you about, feel like, like you necessarily need to do that though? Um, I don't, f actually yes and no. So okay. yes, in the sense of if I have a platform that's empowering women, mm -hmm. and I, I use that word empowering very lightly, but mm -hmm. that's- hopefully transforming women's lives and making them see the real women out yeah, here yeah. and and the beauty in their story. I can't be on here faking it True. like, oh, look at my bags, look yeah. at my, you know what I mean? So I feel like, yes, I need to be more transparent, especially as the host of the show, uh -huh. because I want y'all to see that, look, I'll, I'm keeping it real and I can't expect a guest to keep it real with me on the show if I'm not keeping it real with myself and other people. Okay. So, but in the other sense of um, no, 
Um, wait, what was that? What was the question? Um, do you feel like you have to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so in the other sense, no, I don't feel like I have to do that. Mm -hmm. I feel I want to. Okay. Because I think sometimes the things that I share will help somebody else. Like, there's been so many times I remember writing an article um, about like struggling with losing baby weight and yeah, all these yeah. things and the pressures that are put on women and literally so many women like you're like oh my god i'm so glad i'm not the mm -hmm. only one that feels this way and it was i mean it was just something so simple that that had been weighing on me but i was like oh my gosh i need to put this out like, right, right. it's gonna help somebody else so no i don't feel like i have to but i feel but i want to mm -hmm. because i just don't ever want women to feel like they're alone like we all go through so much stuff mm -hmm. and we know men do too yeah, but yeah. specifically for women that we just kind of carry I want to make sure that like women don't feel like they're alone. So even if it's just one person that can understand and relate, I feel like that's good. Okay. Well, let me ask you this because it's something that I actually dealt with. Like probably like last year or the year before that, I had a period where I was like trying to be as transparent and open as possible uh, or talk about like stuff in my business that I might have messed up on, mm -hmm. lost some money, lost a client, whatever the case may be. But then I ran into it where people would kind of come up to you like, I'm sorry to hear about such and such. Or like, <laughs> Or like, yo, you need some, you good? You need some money or something? I'm like, like, nah, this happened like years ago. Yeah. But I felt like to a degree people were using my transparency, um, not necessarily against me, but they was kind of projecting that on me when I could have been mm. talking about something or could have been something that got over or got yeah. past. Have you ever had huh. anything like that? Wow. That that's a really interesting perspective. I've never thought about it like yeah. that, but there's also things that I haven't shared that I could see that coming back yeah, on me and back yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Right, or, right, right, right. I don't think I have to be in a space to be able to share. Like there's definitely some things that I've gone through or currently going through that I know a lot of a lot of women could relate to, mm -hmm. but I just am not in a space to be able to share. So yeah. I understand, like I feel like people would come to me and be like, damn, for real, yeah. or whatever. Um, no, that hasn't happened to me yet, yeah. but I do get like where you can oh, maybe overshare. But to me, that's just like, you're just being who you are. I hate the fakeness sometimes yeah, of the industry yeah. stuff. It's, it's whack to me. Like, look, right. I'm I, I work out and I still struggle with body image yeah. or whatever it may be. Or yeah, I'm married, but I, we still get into arguments yeah. or yeah, I have friends or we're not rocking right now because of somebody's going through something right, so there's right, still right, right. things and i think you have to be careful of what you share early on while you're still processing your feelings yeah. so you don't have to come back and explain later right 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 like so i felt <laughs> like i definitely had a period where like i, I felt like i was being too transparent so it kind of mm. made me and i felt like i had to be on at all mm. times but what were you being tr too transparent because like like why were you doing it did you feel like you just had nowhere else to get it off your chest or you just wanted you were hoping it was gonna help other people yeah pretty much my, i try to use my social media platform to help people want to come mm -hmm. up because a lot of people just post the highlights mm -hmm. a lot of people just post the greatness the, the 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 bags they get the the money that's coming in all that stuff but nobody really shares like the steps on the on the way to the bag or mm -hmm. way to on the, your journey mm -hmm. and all that stuff so i just felt like it was i try to do everything for who i was back in 2010 mm -hmm. 2011 yeah. like looking on social media trying to find ways of kind of getting to where i wanted mm -hmm. to go get to um but not being able to see those particular steps. So that's kind of, you know, what I was doing it mm -hmm. for. But then I'll have people just kind of randomly come up to me and like, yo, you good? <laughs> okay, like, yeah. Yeah, you all right? Like, but it's good to reflect on no, the no, other no, stuff. No, like no. I, I, even before I came out with like before brunch, I remember posting some pictures like of people I've interviewed and doing stuff. I was like, look, and this time I was feeling this, like, yeah, or I had yeah. just come from this. Right. I mean, there's been plenty of times I've I've cried, like had a bad day and then gone and done an interview and come back home and cry. Like that stuff is really real. Right. But I think people equate your success to what you have and what you're showing. Like, I don't have nothing Gucci in my closet. Yeah. I don't have nothing Louis in my right, house. Right, right. Like that's just, I mean, those things are nice, but mm -hmm. I'm also being able to be very realistic and transparent. The fact that like, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Like, or in me personally, I'm not comfortable with buying all those things right now, knowing that like there's still more work to do. That stuff right, will come, right, but like right. that stuff doesn't, that stuff is not going to get me to the next level. Yeah, yeah. My work and my dedication and my transparency will. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. So let's uh, kind of segue off of this conversation. <laughs> um, I feel like, I believe in the phrase, you got to spend money to make money, right? Mm -hmm. So what yes. is, yeah. So what is something that you spent money on that led to the highest return for you? I mean, aside from like equipment and mm -hmm. of course, you know, your equipment, yeah. your all that good stuff. I think 
experiences and travel and like yourself. So for instance, mm -hmm. being in front of the camera is a little bit expensive. Yeah. You know, you got hair and makeup and clothes. I saw and, how you was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's a lot, like, going, that's on. A lot going on. I yeah. mean, and that is like, you know, I pay a stylist. Like I believe everybody who's there, I'm gonna pay my yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So I don't care if you're my friend or not. Like I really believe in paying people. Right. So um, yeah, that whole production, people see the, the end result, mm -hmm. right? But that's like a $5,000 production. Yeah. Just off the strength of venue rental, food, uh -huh. videographers, um, fashion, photography. Uh -huh. People don't look at yeah. that part. They think just because we're a production company is free. But like, no, when you bring people on, you got to pay. Like right, I had to pay right. you for being out right, there. Like right, that's right. just the respectable thing to do. Not only mentioning, I know everybody who was there would have done it for free, yeah, but yeah. I don't believe in that. Right, right. Um, so I think just myself and like, you know, when I was going to Fashion Week pre-COVID, like spending money, I mean, mm -hmm. that costs money to go up yeah. there. Fortunately, I have my, my good friend Daryl who stays up there at State his house. Uh -huh. But those experiences cost just to get content. Right. So yeah, I would say myself and, and travel to be able to like get content together. Mm, okay. Okay. So, um... What's kind of like the the next level for you? Because I know you said you right now you're in the midst of putting out season three of Before Brunch. Yep, yep. Season okay. three is already dropped, so yeah, we're very excited about that. So my goal, I would love to, and I'm speaking this to existence, like I want Before Brunch to be picked up like nationally. Yeah. So whether that means like something syndicated or. Mm. Um, you know, I want to expand the brand of Before Brunch. So it's not just a show. Like I have some other things down the line yeah, that yeah. are coming for it, but that's the first goal is to become like national show. Okay. Um, and I want to add other elements to it. So I kind of want to blend in like my life, my love for lifestyle and fashion mm -hmm. and beauty within the show. Mm, okay. I'm going to make it more like an hour long show and kind of blend like that interview portion together. So that. Um, and then I want to be like a national lifestyle correspondent for a major network. So mm, okay. I'm, um, I'm a morning TV show fanatic. Really? So ever since I was a kid, like I've always wanted to do Today Show. So I would love to be on there. Like, favorite doing morning show? T today Show. Oh, Today it Show. It's my favorite morning show. Yes. Oh, okay. I've been watching that since I was a child. <laughs> so I want to be on there. Like I want to be like one of the correspondents. I don't need a full time anchor gig. Yeah, That's yeah. really not. I, I still like my freedom to do whatever right, I want right, to do. Right, right. But if I could be a national lifestyle correspondent and come on and talking about like lifestyle things or hacks and beauty mm, okay. and like and women and yeah. empowerment. So taking that before brunch and transforming it into like a bigger lifestyle brand that I can go on different outlets and talk to and speak to other women about. Okay. Okay. That's like goals. Like really? that is ultimate goals for me. Yeah. I can see you making that happen. <laughs> I can definitely see I it. I mean, like I've been saying it for years and like, I know it's going to happen. I think that's why I work so hard because I can see the vision. Right. I've always been able to see the vision. And that's why I, you know, you might have moments where you, where you pause, but uh -huh. you don't give up. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So uh, before we wrap up this conversation, I got one, one other question for you. Okay. Um, let me see how I want to phrase this. <laughs> So if you had to lay out, what are the three most pivotal moments in your life that have led you to where you are today? Hmm. Wow. The three most pivotal moments that have led me to where I am today. I would say the first one is not winning a contest that I, that I gotten in. Really? So I was on the, I, this is like 2009, maybe. I was I was one of the Face of Fox finalists. <laughs> Remember that contest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Wavy, I was mm -hmm. face. I was I was a finalist. I, I was in the top ten. Got down to like the top eight, top six, and then I I lost. And I when I mean tell you, I was devastated. Uh -huh. Like because my videos were on point. Like I had Marcus in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, My joint was on point, right, and right. I was just I was so heartbroken because uh -huh. I put so much energy, and I knew I wanted it so bad. Um, but that caused me. To be like, you know what, Stephanie, do your own thing. Like, mm. continue to do your own thing. And because I continue to do my own thing, a couple of years later, I always stayed in touch with the EP, yeah, her name yeah. Stephanie. And um, she called me back. She was like, hey, do you want to come on and do some lifestyle studies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so next, since then, I've been doing that for like the last four years. And right. it's been an amazing experience, but I get to do it on my terms. Gotcha. So I would say that was one of the first um, pivotal moments. I think the second was... Um, and it can even be something personal. Like, yeah. Um, I think the second was having my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Like that changed my entire life. I mean, obviously for yeah, obvious yeah, yeah, yeah. reasons, but 
when I think about the contribution that I want to give to her life and to the world and how that's made me think about myself. Like, what is she going to be looking at? Like, how am I showing up to her? Mm. Um, that has been a really pivotal moment right. for me in terms of it's making me kind of hustle a little bit harder because I want her to like be able to enjoy the fruits yeah. of like what we're doing. Um, and I would say the last just pivotal moment for me would be having an amazing support system and people who are willing to put you in position to succeed. Mm. Um, one of my really good friends, how I told you I've transitioned. Um, I also work at yellow, like yeah. my friend, um, really good friend, Stacy. She literally has been so amazing in terms of like, yo, I see you yeah. and I want to put you in a position to win. Right. So we're bringing you to this organization. Okay. Now you're going to get promoted. Okay. Now when opportunities pop up, I'm the first on everybody's mind to do anything like media related. Yeah. So having people in your corner to put you in position to win and actually follow through with their actions, that has been so... It's rare you, you get that. Yeah, it's yeah. very rare you get that. And so I know the, the importance and the power in that. And so True. I try my best to do that for other people as well because I know that feeling of how it one person just pushing you in the door a little bit can yeah. change your life. So that, that has been really impactful for me and it's made me make better decisions when somebody asks me oh do you know somebody who can do this and that i really think about what that means because you know we can think smile top of hair real quick yeah, yeah. we can get the job number when you talk about the impact and what that would mean for somebody else's life right, right, right. you might not be the most qualified but i can put you in the best position to win there's a difference hmm. well i feel like i've just heard you say this before <laughs> I don't know if it was like a clip that you posted or something. It was on one. I think it was one of one of the episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I said, I think I said, if I bring you to the room, you're a reflection in me. Right, 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 right. That's so, what it was. I like this me, is so much deja vu yeah. right now. <laughs> you don't have to be the most qualified person, right. but if you're gonna appreciate it the most, you're gonna work harder. That is true. That is true. Okay. Yeah. Hi, what's up? This was a great conversation. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. was so good. Yeah, this was awesome. This was awesome. I knew it was gonna be good when it, I asked you to be up Aww, here. Thank you for yeah. asking me. I appreciate this. No this problem. Was fun. No problem. So uh where can people find you at? Yeah, so you can find me at Steph Walters TV. That's my name on all social platforms. Um, but you can find me at Before Brunch TV. It's beforebrunchtv.com. That's consistent on all social platforms as well. And then my website is stephwalterstv.com. And then you'll be seeing me on TV really soon too. So stay tuned. <laughs> well, definitely, once again, thank you for being thank a part you. of this. And guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you follow Steph. Make sure you subscribe to her YouTube channel. Make sure you watch everything she has going on. Watch please. Before Brunch TV. <laughs> I actually helped on a couple, uh, couple of those uh, couple, episodes. All of them. Yeah, all the episodes. So it, it's a great show to watch. Um, and if you love this interview, please consider subscribing to my channel. Please make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at Shad Harris. And uh, that's pretty much all I got. So uh, you guys stay safe, stay running free, but keep creating, keep shooting. And you guys have a good one.